Hey everybody, Jay Smith here. This is another Fish Pod Network podcast. Today, I'm just sitting with my buddy Paul Fleming. What's going on, man? What's up? All right, so we're gonna talk about uh, what we're we gonna do first: the tides. Tide yeah, show? we could we could talk about the tides. You know, okay. when you're it's important to know these things. For and, sure. And the reason I wanted to bring up all these uh, topics for people is, uh, like even myself, I've been around the water a lot, but I don't go offshore. I'm more of a kayak yeah. type of guy, inshore guy. But anybody can just hop in a boat and go. For sure. Well, and even, knowing this stuff will help. But even in your, you know, even if you're not an offshore fisherman, even if you're an inshore fisherman, knowing your tides, and knowing the uh, the, the the how to fish the major and the minor. Uh, I mean, we fish inshore a lot, even with kingfish. Uh, kingfish are very close to shore, and, and we've even caught them, you know, up up in the bay. Mm -hmm. So you know, knowing how to read the tides and what the tides mean. Is, is a crucial part of fishing for sure right okay so starting off we're gonna we're gonna go fishing yep. um, you're gonna check the conditions right now what's the first thing you do for the tides first thing I do now I have uh, the Navionics app it's a, it's a it's a really cool app on my phone it's got my maps and everything else but it also has a tide chart so when we look into that this particular thing here has got you know it's got the map here but it's got my my uh, tide chart right here okay so you know depending on the type of fishing you're going but generally the way the bait moves is they're moving with the current right and your fish are gonna be more active during the currents so your major and your minor which would be at the top of the tide and the bottom of the right. tide, um, when that tide goes slack you know I, we've all caught fish on a slack tide yeah but it's it usually it's, it's, not it's usually it's, it's, it's pretty difficult yeah so you want to know uh, in your area how much current goes through there this particular app also has uh, a current flow so you can actually see different currents in different areas right um, so in this particular thing in this particular app you know right around 108 is your major right here and 822 tonight is your, is your minor so you know i mean a as of right now <laughs> we're we're coming down to the minor right here this mm -hmm. is some optimal fishing time right, right. Here. so that's usually what you know hour or two before each change of the tide about that yeah, and it all depends on the location it's it's mm -hmm. amazing how how different the tides are from an area yeah so definitely. if you're in the middle of tampa bay for our viewers who are local here the tide change is literally almost an hour between the center of Tampa Bay mm -hmm. and Egmont Channel. Right. So it starts. And it's at the, really not that far of a starts ride. Starts at the mouth and then works, and its, works way its way back, way back yeah. in. Correct. And same thing coming back out. Right. Right. It starts back here and works its way back out. So, but it's amazing how in just that short bit of difference it can be an hour well, and that's where the term chasing the tide comes from too. People, that's especially sure. inshore. I know inshore those guys though. So sometimes that tide's really critical in certain areas to be there at the exact right time. For sure. So, uh, yeah, knowing that. So, okay, this is from what now? Navionics? This is from the, yeah, this okay. is from the Navionics app. It's a great app. It's, uh, I want to say it's like 10 or 15 bucks. Um, and, and it gives you navigation, tells you your speed, course if, heading, If routes. you're into fishing, it's worth the 10 it, to fix. For sure. Bucks, yeah. for sure. For sure. For um, sure. But, it, and again, it's got your tide chart. It's got a current chart. Mm -hmm. um, you can save your uh, waypoints. And I mean, if I actually exploded that, you'd it looked like chicken pox because I got a couple numbers. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, as a matter of fact, like that—that's what it would show there. So this is it right here in, in our local area, Egmont Key. Uh, that's actually showing the 90-foot hole right yeah, there. Yeah, I was about to say I don't think that one's a big secret. No, that one's yeah. not a big secret. Everybody knows where the 90-foot hole is. And I'd say right now, tarpener. Big time rolling in there. Yeah, ripping through there. Yeah. I've seen a bunch of guys uh, that we know uh, posting online. They're and, definitely well, catching. and especially with tarpon fishing, knowing how to read your majors and minors mm -hmm. is crucial. So, all right, well, while we're on the subject, what, when it comes to tarpon fishing, what would you be looking for if you're going out? What what kind of tide are you looking for? I'm, I'm uh, really, I'm going to, I'm going to emphasize on the top of the, the, top the, of the, 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 ma the major mm -hmm. and the minor. Both. Oh, okay, good. Because these fish understand when that tide is going to move right so when you're at a mid tide you know it's that current starting to slow down a little bit and then right at the bottom of the tide just before it slacks that bait is now starting to scatter and trying to find refuge because it's losing its tide right. so the fish start to get really active because they're sitting there trying to pop that bait um, so either the major or the minor, those are the two best times to fish right. in, any, in, in, in any circumstance in, in my book. 
whether it's offshore or inshore, major and minor, minor tides are going to be your best. And you think that's uh, for uh, you know, there's always a debate on certain species of fi- mm-hmm. fish what when they bite better and all that. Do you think it it's normally two tides and people are just full of it or what? In my in my opinion, in my uh, I've always wondered the same thing. I'm like I don't know, man. Well, in, in my experiences of fishing. Uh, going by my rules of thumb of the major and the minor, right. those, those have always been my hot times. You know, you do catch you do catch quite a bit of fish here, and again, we've we've caught them on the on the slack. Mm-hmm. I mean, we've all done it, but they, they're just more elusive, so to speak. Right. Um, so they kind of take that time to to re-energize because they've been swimming in current. So they'll take that slack time to to just kind of bust a bait. <laughs> <laughs> to go go chill out. You right, know? right, and get out of the way for right. a little bit. All right. What else? Anything else on tides? No, that's probably that's probably it. Just you know, obviously you want to be able to, to read your tide chart and, right. and, and know. That. So in conclusion, top and bottom of the tide are, are pretty good times. Yeah, to those go. are the, those are the best times. Yeah, in my go mind. out when you can go out, but absolutely. But if you're gonna, I mean, if you're able to plan a trip toward around mm-hmm. the tides that's, and target certain areas yeah. according to when the tide's going yeah. to be moving. So so in the, in this case here, if we were planning a trip mm-hmm. to go this afternoon, mm-hmm. um, you know, 108 is going to be your major. So at noon is where I, when I want to be putting that boat in. If I'm if I'm going to bait up or I'm going to, to cast net or something like that, I want to give myself an hour to get myself to my location, get baited up, and get ready to go right. so that I'm there right at the major. Yeah, a question for you. You were mentioning something about tide flow charts, and uh, I know we don't have a picture of it right now, but um, <clears throat> when you're looking at those, what are you looking for, for as far as tide flow? Is there too much, too little? Uh, is there a sweet spot, or are you just you just want moving water? Period. You, you, you know, I'll I'll tell you the uh, believe it or not, fast moving tide is when you'll find a lot of snook mm-hmm. and even tarpon. Do you think it can be too much? You think there's a point when it when it's too fast? Yeah, probably. It seems like it. Uh, I, I would say so, but you know, if you've got a very high current area mm-hmm. with structure, um, you'll tend to find. Uh, fish that will ambush there because yeah. they'll sit behind that structure. They'll sit in the eddies and, and wait. Everything. Yeah, and they'll wait for that stuff to come by, and then they'll jump right on it. Right. Okay. So all right. Well, that's it for tides. What else we got? We got uh, so some th- buoy marker this stuff. This is yeah. This is a a, a fish weather app that I use, um, and it gives me you know uh, the date, the time, the wind, what the the gusts are supposed to be, um, and then obviously gives you your forecast and your wave height. Um, so in this particular case here, the, actually the wave height is down, down below it. it it's showing very minor waves, uh, point 0.5 point. Sure. Yeah. yeah. It is, this it, is, it looks like a good time to get out. Yeah. This is definitely <laughs> a good time. If you're going offshore, this is the time you want <laughs> right. to go. Just so you know, if you're, if you ever get into tournament fishing, it never looks like this. Yeah, right. It <laughs> looks like this on Monday. Yeah. And then when it rolls around time to go, it's, uh, Saturday it, it, morning, it, it's all, it's all red, all up. red and orange and <laughs> <laughs> purples and all kinds of stuff. Um, but again, you want to look at the you, know, you want to look at the winds and, and you know prep your day. If you are going yeah. offshore, you want to know what the weather is going to be like. You know, uh, obviously, you want to know if you've got any thunderstorms out there this time of year. Very prone to you know afternoon thunderstorms, right yeah. when those uh, the east coast and the west coast winds meet. Especially if you're in a kayak like yeah. me a lot, like this kind of stuff is important, and you want to plan your day around it too. Give yourself plenty of time to get back. There's nothing worse than getting caught in a yeah, lightning storm. You don't want to get caught in that. I no. have you don't <laughs> a few get caught times. In that. And it's not fun. It's really scary. So uh, knowing what's going on with uh, the weather is really important to yes. me as well. I mean, now here's the other thing: when you're looking at these apps, <laughs> the wave height is going to be a little deceiving. Um, they take the information off the mean of the wave. What we call the mean of the wave. That so sounds like some science. It, it is. There's definitely some science. So. When you look at a buoy report like we've got here, this is the West Tampa buoy. This is out in the middle grounds, mm-hmm. um, 112 miles northwest of Tampa Bay. Um, so this one here is going to give you what your air temperature, what your water temperature is. It's going to give you the the uh, speed of, the speed of the wind and everything else. The wave height is one foot. Okay, so when you're looking at that one foot, that those waves are three feet, not one feet. Okay. Because what they're doing is, is they take the average of the top and the bottom of the wave, and then they give you the mean, which is the middle of the wave. I see. So if you see a three-foot C at this buoy, you're probably closer to five to six. Five to six. Right. So. I wonder why they do that. It seems a little mm-hmm. deceptive. It's definitely deceptive, but I think they try to, they try to give you more of an accurate, so they, they average the, the waves out is what they're doing. 
Yeah, I'll go for more like, hey, uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty steep out here. You might not. That, want. That's correct. Yeah, but I mean that that's just the way it is. And then obviously your your peak period and your average period is something if you're uh, if you're you're running a boat, you want to know that information as right. well because that's going to determine how fast you can move through the water um, and how far the the waves are spread apart. You know, if those waves are you know six seconds apart, four to six seconds apart but it's rough mm -hmm. you're gonna have to slow yourself down a little bit if they're spread out you've got you got a better chance of being able to hop to that next wave at a higher just rpm floor it over it just kind yeah. of just skim over the top of the waves. yeah yeah so all right well uh do we have anything else on this nope, that's all it. right you know what i was just sitting there thinking i think we might <laughs> we might have to make this a thing and call it uh, like fish bites or something i don't want we'll to come up for a name yeah. for this but uh, you got a lot of information in you, and we're, I'm going to extract it all. So uh, let us know Sounds what painful. you guys think. If you guys have any <laughs> questions or anything, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make this more of a uh, routine thing, me and Paul sitting down. And uh, I, we'll talk about all kinds of stuff uh, the, to do with boating, fishing, whatever, as much, as much information as possible. And then uh, once I get all the information out of his head, I'll grab somebody else, and we'll... we'll We'll use them up too. In other words, <laughs> in other words, when he's drained me and he's done, he'll get somebody else. Okay, that's getting a little <laughs> out of hand there. All right, everybody. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to call this fish bites or not. I was just being silly, but uh, that's kind of cool, though. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see. We'll, this could become a thing. Uh, so you can see uh, this video on our YouTube channel. Uh, go to fishpodnetwork.com. You can see everything fish pod related. Uh, make sure you check out Fish Pod TV, our live show at 8 o'clock every Thursday on Fish Pod Network on the uh, Facebook page. Yeah. And well, I know you can watch Facebook, it on the YouTube website. Website and everything. Actually, the website is the best way to watch our tournaments, too, when we're doing live tournament yeah. coverage, uh, tournament page on there. So make sure you check out fishpodnetwork.com, and we'll have more of these soon. I guess we'll call it Fish Bites or something. All right, we'll yeah. make sure nobody else is doing that first. That's it. That could be already taken, so we'll see. But uh, we'll see you guys in the next one. Ooh, my ears are sweating. Well, at least it waited.